Let me just survey these with you because I thought it was such a blessing this week. Number one, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that the disciples had a bold witness. Uh, uh, Let's look at uh, chapter 4, verse 8 for just a moment. I'll show you an example for each one of these. 4, 8, then Peter, what does it say? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Number one, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that the disciples witness for Christ with boldness. Now, do you sometimes struggle telling someone else about Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. If you're honest, uh, we all do. What we're admitting to when we say we struggle is we admit to not fully operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. When we are operating completely in the power of God's Spirit, we are absolutely, unashamedly, boldly sharing the gospel. That's just how it is. You can't, it's just like that radio in Los Angeles. As long as it wasn't plugged in, it was silent. As soon as it got plugged in, you couldn't turn it off until you remove the power. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, uh, let's look at uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 3. Um, Because secondly, not only is it by the power of the Holy Spirit that disciples witness, but it's by the Holy Spirit that people were equipped for ministry. Uh, I just got a note today from someone, and they said, please, I want to serve the Lord. Tell me what to do. I want to do something for the Lord. Do you know what it is? That's someone that's been sitting out here for ages that the Spirit of God is touching their life and they want to plug their life into something that's going to last forever in the kingdom of God. Well, look at chapter 6, verse 3. This is what it says. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit that people were equipped for ministry. And it says that repeatedly. It says that in 217, 218, 48, 65, 917, 11, 28, 19, 6, 20, 28, 21, 4, and 21, 11. And it says that in every instance, the Spirit of God equipped people to do the work of the ministry. He gave them the equipment they needed. You ever seen the war movies, the old-fashioned World War II movies that showed all these people coming in during the war? And they'd, these guys would walk through the line, and they'd hand them their pile. You know, and on top would be their helmet, and they, they, on the way out the door, they'd get their rifle. They got all their equipment to go fight in the war. God says, I, so much better than giving a, a rifle that will jam and a helmet that will fall off, he says, I will internally write upon the very inward parts of your life my word, my truth, and I will gift you by my spirit to serve me. Thirdly, and uh, let's look at uh, chapter 9, verse 31 here. Uh, the, the third one is it's by the power of the Spirit that joy and comfort comes to, to God's servants. And it says in 931, this is very interesting. This is after um, the Apostle Paul is saved. He was a real antagonist. 931, then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort, look at that, of the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, it is by the power of the Holy Spirit that joy and comfort come to God's servants. I think of Bill Hayes. Did you know that as we prayed for him tonight, uh, I, don't, I don't have my phone on right now, but you know, none of us would think anything of taking a cell phone, turning it on, and punching in a number, and when we hit talk and lift it to our ear, we do not even think twice about the fact that it's going to ring and someone at the other end is going to receive that signal. I mean, we just believe it's going to happen. And we use it all the time. Did you know prayer is the same way? Did you know that right now when, when Prince led us in prayer, that, that uh, as it were, a si- signal bounced up instantaneously before the throne of God and it was dispatched according to his will down to Bill Hayes, wherever he is right now, in pre-op, at home, with his folks, maybe sick uh, to his stomach, maybe sad right now. Do you realize that when you pray that you can precipitate or you can initiate through the will of God the comfort of the Holy Spirit in the life of someone else? If we realized how powerful it was, we would be using it constantly as a 
as an offering of ourselves to God. I, I meet older people that, that say, I can't do anything in the church anymore. You know what I do? I point them to the people that are older that have learned to, to devote themselves to prayer. Prayer makes you on the forefront of the spiritual battle around the world. You can be side by side with, with the missionaries anywhere in the world. In fact, what I think is so neat is when we came back from Russia recently, one of our real prayer warriors came to me and said, I want five minutes. I want to know exactly what are the best and key things in Russia for me to pray for. I said, really? You're serious? They said, yes. So I looked him right in the eye and I said, there's a pastor who is one of the biggest dynamos for Christ I've ever seen and all of us that were there. I mean, it was astounding. I said, why don't you pray that he'll be safe, that as he drives madly all over Russia, that the Lord will keep him safe, uh, that he'll be sensitive to his family because he works from dark to dark. Uh, I mean, he'd be out of the house before it was light and a lot of times uh, he would wake me up stumbling in at 11.30 at night from some meeting out in the in the villages. I said, why don't you pray for his safety? Why don't you pray for his strength, his sensitivity? And as I was sharing this, this older person was writing him down as fast as they could, and they said, thank you, because I'm investing my life in prayer, and I want to invest it wisely. Do you look on prayer, or is it just kind of like, now I lay me down to sleep, and, uh, you know, thanks for the grub, rub-a-dub-dub, you know, and it's, that's it. I mean, that's the extent of our prayer. God said, it's by the power of his spirit that joy and comfort can be ministered to faithful servants, and we, by prayer, can appropriate, appropriate that and God's interdiction and work in their lives.